Here you go. And we're recording. All right, so I just posted in the chat one more time. Morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Uh, I'm going to post it one more time in the chat, just a, a link to the agenda and then the sign-in sheet. Okay. Um, we'll just get started. Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Santi Karasami, and uh, I started a, a company called Project Recess. Uh, Tracy is going to be the host helping me out through this. Hello, Tracy. Um, I'm just going to pause this music for one second. So we're, today we're going to go over how to one of the many ways to conduct a virtual graduation. Um, Tracy is going to be the host. She's going to be fielding some of the questions. If folks have some questions, feel free to drop it in the chat. Uh, if there's time, maybe we can we can take them at the end. Um, so yes, if you have a minute, please sign into the the form that's in the chat and the agenda's there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to share my screen, and then uh, we're just going to walk through the process of um, of conducting a uh, a graduation. So bear me bear with me for a second. Oh, um, actually, uh, Tracy, I'm going to reclaim host because I, I need to share the screen, okay? Go for it. Okay. Okay. So, bear with me for one second. Okay. Okay, so again, folks, thanks for, uh, for joining us. Uh, we're going to be going over virtual graduations. So the sign-in uh, is also a Q&A form, but I think we're just going to, going to ask folks to drop questions in the chat. But if you want the link to the sign-in form, it's bit.ly slash DOE grad Q at the end. And uh, the overview, so introductions, uh, I went over. Uh, my name is Santi. Tracy's also on the call. She's going to be helping me out uh, today. The expected outcomes, uh, hopefully folks will have a better understanding of how you can use uh, Google tools for a virtual graduation. We're going to be focusing on two, mainly one, mainly YouTube, uh, using the Premiere setting. Uh, I will touch on Google Meet, um, but again, uh, I will focus more on YouTube Live or uh, YouTube um, using the Premiere setting. Uh, so YouTube Live versus the stream Google Meet. One of the main differences between uh, these two these two platforms is that when you're using a Google Meet your audience will be people within your school domain. So that already poses an issue if you have parents who don't have uh, a school domain. You know, so if the goal is to pre-record your content and stream it so everyone can see, uh, in this case, I recommend uploading your video to YouTube and setting it as a premiere. And then again, I'll show people what that process looks like. And I even set one up so we can see uh, how that will work. Hold on one second. Um, just want to make sure no nobody's in the waiting room. Okay. All right. So, so the suggested process with this, you want to start by creating a virtual graduation organizing team. Um, so this can consist of school administrators, teachers, uh, arts and performance teachers, uh, maybe folks from the yearbook if you have uh, that group, and uh, students also. Um, at the end of the day, we're doing this for the students. And I think it would be, you know, in our best interest to uh, give voice to students and make sure they're part of the process if possible. So before you even start exploring platforms, uh, it's recommended that you start with a, an organizing team. So Tracy and I are supporting multiple schools right now in, uh, in organizing their virtual graduation. And all the schools I'm working with have some sort of team. Uh, it doesn't have to be a big team, but this is a, this is a big undertaking. And you want to make sure that you have help and you can bounce ideas off people. So um, discussions, live stream versus a pre-recorded event. Um, I don't know about you, but like I'm feeling stretched thin with all the work that's happening right now. Um, so I'm leaning toward pre-recorded content. You can choose to live stream stuff, but that requires a lot of coordination, a lot of technical skill, and uh, just a lot of planning. And if you want to go down that route, I mean, I think that's great. But you know, this is the first time we're doing uh, remote learning, right, on a large scale. This is the first time we're doing a, a virtual graduation. So I'm, I personally am recommending my schools to go the uh, pre-recorded route, just because you have more control over the content. You can uh, vet the content, make sure nothing crazy is happening, make sure nobody's saying anything that 
doesn't need to be said, no, no surprises, right? So again, I'm leaning toward pre-recorded content and then um, editing that video and posting it to YouTube to premiere at a certain time. So there's a bunch of platforms that we're all, we all are using, YouTube, Meet, Zoom, Facebook Live, et cetera. Have a conversation, look at the, the pros and cons of all of them. We don't have much time to go over all of these platforms today. That's why I'm just focusing on uh, the Google ones. But, um, but yes, um, there are a lot out there. So another thing, you can choose to self-organize the virtual graduation or you can hire a production company. I hear some schools are, are doing that. Um, that's fine, but again, if you're going the pre-recorded route, I think it's, it's manageable for you and your team to do it on your own. And uh, Tracy and I and my team are here to answer any questions. We could possibly support your school if you are in need of that. Um, total duration of the event. So m many of the schools that I'm supporting, um, we're trying to get the whole ceremony uh, beginning to end at about an hour or hour and a half. Uh, you don't want such a long um, ceremony. You know, you want to make, because then that means that's a, that's a long video you're editing. So maybe your video is going to be that long, but um, for the purposes of the schools that I'm supporting, we're recommending about an hour, hour and a half, because after that, you know, people's uh, attention spans begin to begin to get affected by that. So privacy, um, you want to ask yourself, you know, did each student sign a media release form at the beginning of the year? And uh, I had this conversation with Lisa Nielsen, who's also on the on the Zoom call here. And these are some interesting questions to ask yourself. So what would you do if it were a school play, you know, um, in terms of having student names displayed, in terms of having student photos displayed? You know, if you were printing out on a brochure, is that something you would feel comfortable about doing with a, uh, a virtual graduation? Um, and, you know, if you recorded a live graduation, what would you do with that video? Would it live on your school website? Would it live on a YouTube channel? Because essentially you're going to be doing that with this virtual graduation. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, please check with your principal and school leaders regarding overall media consent, because that can, uh, you want to make sure that you're, you're safe with that. So after you organize your team, you want to create a flow of how the, um, how the workshop or how the virtual graduation will work. So here's an example that I have with one of my schools. We're starting, and, and again, these are all like little video clips. So we can have the Pledge of Allegiance, the pop and circumstance with students' name scrolling. Um, the principal can have their opening remarks. You can have a salutatorian speech. As you can see, we have all these things here. So you can make your graduation however you want, but um, I would recommend, yes, creating a, a team of people and working all on these small videos and then just bringing it all together uh, at the end. So creating the video content, this is probably gonna be one of the most difficult pieces also because not everyone knows how to edit video. Uh, hopefully there's somebody within your school environment that knows how to use you know, iMovie or WeVideo, but again, you wanna delegate responsibility for creating each piece of the program. You know, that's, that's a lot of work for one person to do all those things. So again, if you have an arts teacher on your team, maybe they can coordinate you know, students uh, doing some small performance. Maybe you can have some other teachers organizing what the names scrolling will look like, um, so on and so forth. How are you recording the video? I think it's, you wanna have things as consistent as possible. I know that's tricky uh, nowadays where, you know, everyone has their own sp uh, specific setup, but you wanna try to coordinate as much as possible, right? Like, is everyone wearing school uniform? school gear of some sort, a certain color. Maybe somebody has a graduation cap and gown at home, um, but you wanna coordinate the look, uh, speak slowly, loudly, clearly. I'm not doing that during this, uh, this uh, session here. Uh, if you're using a, pho a phone, I uh, definitely recommend uh, people recording um, landscapes. So, so like this, right, instead of like this. So it's a mistake, a common mistake. If you're recording, please make sure the phone is in landscape because that makes um, the editing of the video much e easier and better to look at when it's on an actual computer screen. Uh, you know, using natural light from windows, face the window, be, beware of backlighting. And again, going back to how you're gonna edit the video, I think uh, most people in your team will have access to a Mac computer and um, 
there, there's iMovie on there. So I would recommend uh, folks using that uh, to edit the video. And there's also WeVideo. I know people have been uh, using that as well. All right, sharing the video. Okay, Google Meet. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to create a live stream via Google Meet and then how you can cast this through your tab. So if you wanna do Google Meet, I'm, I'm gonna go over it. But again, something you wanna consider is if you're using a Google Meet, the people who can watch it are limited to those within your school domain. So most likely your, your parents uh, don't have that. Um, other people in the community don't have a uh, domain uh, email address. But um, I, will, I will go over this. So what does that look like? Hold on, I'm just uh, admitting some people here. Um, hello everyone, I, I know some folks are just joining us. Thank you for joining us. Um, right now I'm gonna go over how to create a, uh, a live Google Meet. So let me share my screen one more time. Okay, so how do we do uh, a Google Meet? So it begins in calendar actually. So you wanna to go to your Google Calendar. Okay. And then you wanna choose the day where your graduation is gonna happen. So let's say it's gonna be June 1st. You're gonna click on that. So you're gonna type in the name, you're gonna to go to more options. Also, I just wanna reiterate that this session is being recorded and I will share this with folks um, later on. So you have your example, example graduation. Actually, I'm gonna to switch to a different profile here. Um, so let's try this one more time. So you're gonna to go to calendar. You're gonna to go to your event, example grad. You're gonna to go to more options. And then here you're gonna see add Google Meet video conferencing. When you click on that, um, I know it's kind of hard to see, but there is a little drop down right over here. When you click on that, you're gonna see an option to add a live stream, okay? So if I click add live stream, now I enabled live stream within that Google Meet. So when I join that Google Meet, I'll see an option to uh, broadcast it live. So keep this in mind, there are two separate links here. You have your meeting ID for your actual Google Meet. So this is where people can join the meet and you can interact with them. But for the general public uh, who have a, dom a school domain of yours, they would need to go here. So you would copy this live stream link. There's a copy icon right here. So if, you were to, if someone were to visit that, they would see this waiting for the stream to begin. All right, so if I were to join this Google Meet, So I see myself and then um, there's right here, it says start streaming. Okay, so you would click that and then is everyone okay? And then again, once, once this is live, it'll say that you're live. In the, going back to the calendar event, you see the, uh, the live stream link right over here. So you would share that with your school community. And then if I were to go to that live stream, once this is live, it'll say that you're live, see? And then, um, and then it, there's a little bit of a delay, but now, again, people can see the live streams. So they're not in the Google Meet, they're watching the live stream. And then I would um, actually cast, you would cast your tab of, uh, of your uploaded uh, Google uh, YouTube video. So let's say, if I search like graduation, Auntie, while you're doing that, we've just had a great question come yes. from Christine. Okay. Um, asking about the 250 limit for live stream. I believe it's still set at 250 people on a Google Meet live stream. Is that correct? So I think it's 250 on a Google Meet. On the live stream, I believe it's more than that. Um, let's see. We'll get back and we'll confirm. Yeah, I, I believe it's more. So I think it's 250 on an actual Meet which is this right here, but on the live stream, I think it might be in, in the thousands. Oh, it's actually 100,000 people. Okay, uh, that's, that's a very large audience. 
Okay. So again, um, if you're doing it via Meet, so you would have the live stream set up and then assuming you already uploaded your pre-recorded graduation to YouTube, you would go to present now and then you would go, um, you would cast your window, your, your, your Chrome tab, I should say. So you click on that and then you would choose the tab with uh, YouTube and then you would share it. And so, um, and so let's say, see, so let's say this is your graduation. The audio would play through the user speakers and then you would, um, you would just have it play like that. So now if I go to my live stream, so again, there's a delay on it, but you'll see the live stream uh, video show up here, but the quality isn't that great. That's another reason, sort of another strike against using uh, Google Meet uh, live stream, but it should show up in a second. Okay. Actually, turn that audio off. Okay, sorry, Santi, can we yeah, yeah. pause again? So, um, what the questions coming up are great, and they're asking, do they share the Google Meet link or the live stream link? So the, I think in That's a great public, question. I'll, I'll reiterate, you wanna share the live, if the goal is to have the general public see the live stream, you're gonna share the live stream link, not the Google Meet link, okay? And again, the live stream link, after you create your event, uh, you're gonna see the live stream link at the bottom here. So to me, um, if I save this event, you'll see, see, you'll see watch your live stream. You would copy that link and then send it out to your school community. Again, I wanna reiterate, if you are uh, choosing to stream live via Google Meet, the only people who can watch the live stream are people with, your, with a school domain email address. So again, most parents don't have that. Most uh, other relatives don't have that. So if you wanna keep a live streamed event within your school community, this is a nice way to go. Uh, let's see if this worked out. Okay, so then, so I'm streaming this and then, oh, I know. If I hit live here, instant will meet. The only people who can, see? So now, if I'm, so then you would see um, your graduation ceremony being played over here but then the quality isn't that great. And then you would still, it wouldn't be full screen. You would still see your icon here on this side. Okay, so that's, that's something else to consider. Could you just check the waiting room, Santi? Yes, I'll check the waiting room more time. Thank you. There are seven people on there. Okay. So are there any, um, any questions regarding sharing something via Google Meet one more time? Is there, okay, is there a chat for those watching uh, no, not if you're not if not if you're doing a live stream Google Meet. There's no chat in there, but there is one if you're sharing it through YouTube, which I'm going to get into uh, in a minute. Okay. So, uh, any other questions regarding sharing something through Meet? Not really. It was more just about would it be better to have it instead of having it live on something like YouTube and sharing it, having it locally on the computer. And if that's yeah. an option, I was just saying yes, that's a great idea. Okay. So I'm just gonna share my screen one more time, uh, just so people can see what it looks like to uh, share this, um, share your video via uh, live stream Google Meet. So again, so if somebody were to join it, they would see this. Again, it's not gonna be full screen. You're gonna see your icon uh, right over here. And depending on you know your internet speed will affect how clear it looks, but it looks okay for the most part. So. Again, if you want something within your domain, you're gonna do a, a Google Meet live stream. So let me stop sharing. So the next thing I'm gonna go over, um, how do you do this via YouTube, which is what I recommend, because you do have that chat feature and you can uh, generate excitement uh, through like um, a link saying when it's gonna premiere. So let me uh, share my screen one more time and I'm gonna walk everyone through how to do this uh, via YouTube. All right, so let me get out of these. And then let me switch to my other profile. Okay, so assuming that I've already uploaded my, actually, okay, assuming I've already edited my virtual graduation video and I have it as one file, so now what do I do with that? So we're gonna go to YouTube, okay? Um, 
you're gonna go to uh, this icon over here to upload a video. And then you're gonna add your video to this screen. So I already have my video right here. I'm gonna drop it in. And it's gonna bring you to this window where you get to add details. So I'll say example graduation 2020. You can have a description. You know, you'll add information about your school. Um, you can add a thumbnail. So a pro tip about adding a thumbnail, uh, there is a website called Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com. What I like about this website is that um, they have pre-generated templates, um, especially for YouTube channels. So I created one already. So let's see what that looks like. If I, if I upload the thumbnail, I have it in here. Um, it's a card. So again, I recommend using the website Canva. There's a lot of templates on there. So see, here's a nice um, sort of card that I made already, which is just like a title slide. Uh, audience, so this is important. Uh, you have two options. Yes, it's made for kids. No, it's not made for kids. If you select, yes, it's made for kids, uh, what's nice is that there will be no personalized ads, but there will, no, there will not be chat also. You will not have a live chat because it's made for kids. Um, but if you select no, there will be a live chat box on the side. So you wanna ask yourself, uh, do you want to have a chat box? Uh, in, in regards to that chat box, you can have somebody help you moderate what the, ch what the chats are. So, you know, to help prevent any surprises happening there. So again, if you select it's made for kids, there's no chat. If you select no, then there will be one. Are you right. able to, I have a quick, quick question. Please. Are you able yeah. to, um, like, if someone were to post something, are you able to delete it as the owner of the video? If there are post uh, comment, yeah, you can delete comments on there. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, thank you. So I'm gonna hit next, uh, video elements, <clears throat> um, other cards in there. I tend to not add, add any of those things. Uh, I'm just gonna hit next. So here is where you can schedule it, okay? So the first option, save or publish, uh, you actually wanna go down to schedule. And so here, assuming that you already know when your graduation is gonna happen, so um, let's say graduation is happening, you know, uh, June 19th, and then you can choose a time. So let's say June 19th at, um, let's say 12 p.m., okay? So, that's very important. You want to make sure that you have this date set correctly. You can add a time zone and then you want to add set as premiere. All right. So when I click set as premiere, as you can see, a public watch page will be, will be created and it'll show a countdown, which is pretty cool. And then you can direct people to that link. They can bookmark it. You can email it out. You can tweet out that link. And then again, generate excitement for this quote live reveal of your pre-recorded graduation. So then I'm going to hit schedule. And then there we go. So your video will premiere on June 19th, 2020 at 12 p.m. Uh, so then it's gonna be processing. So you wanna give yourself, I would say like at least a week before your actual graduation one. So the actual um, video can be compressed and be ready to go on YouTube. And then also again to generate buzz. So last night I set it, I set a, um, a premiere for that, uh, what that would look like to give everybody an idea. I set it to play at 11 o'clock today. So let's see what that looks like. If I scroll down the agenda. Can we just I... pause one sec yes, please. before we go? Just a couple of great questions coming okay. in. And I yeah, think yeah, yeah. everybody would benefit. Yes. Um, is YouTube free? Is this streaming part free? Yes, this is free. Yes, it's part of, it's part of your channel. Yes. It, and is there a filter or a way to moderate the comments? Because I think quite a few people are concerned that maybe their students aren't. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question. Okay, I'll go over that right now. So with the comments, um, okay, so if I go to settings, whoops. Okay, first of all, this is what the premiere will look like. It says premieres in 21 days. Okay, um, let me go back. So within your YouTube studio account, which is, your, essentially your dashboard where you are uploading your videos. Um, under settings, community, 
okay, so under community, you can add other moderators to help filter out the comments. Um, so you would find the, uh, the person, so if it's another teacher, you would need to find their uh, YouTube homepage and you just paste it in here. So I added my other account as a, as a moderator. And then um, there is an option in here to, to edit the, um, the comments. So here in that video, if you click on that comment icon, uh, again, if you wanted to, you can delete this. But even before it goes live, there's a place. Um, I'm gonna have to check back on this and I can email everybody, but there is a place where you can set, do you want the comments to be filtered before everybody sees them? Okay, so there, there is a place to do that. It's just, uh, it's sort of buried in the settings over here, but I, I, I will get to that. Um, any other uh, questions regarding that, Tracy? Oh, and I think that's just, I know we don't have time now, but sending out a video afterward would be great. So we were looking yeah. at, we were gonna look at your Premier, I believe. Sure. So if I click on this example, okay, so this premieres in two minutes, um, the reminder's on. So again, once you upload this, you're gonna have people coming to this page. You can see how many people are waiting. Um, if folks go to it, there, I can drop a link to this in the chat. Um, so people can check it out. Um, so there's a link if people want to see that. And I'll go back to sharing this. So you'll have the people, you'll see the people waiting and then you can, if you want to test out what the chat looks like, you can have that on there. Okay, here we go. Um, so while we're waiting, let me just show this one more time. Okay, when you are at the, the page, when your video is gonna premiere in 60 seconds, at the top right here, there's just three dots, manage moderators. Again, you can add multiple people, other teachers to help moderate your comments. And if you go to defaults, you can choose how this will work. Hold all comments for review is the safest thing. Disable comments allow comments or hold potentially inappropriate comments. Uh, I'm sure it's using some sort of AI, but you have a lot of, uh, of options there. So uh, again, you would click on these three dots when you um, posted your video to Premiere, and then you would go to manage moderators. Um, so I think that's a great way to- Okay, uh, Santi, sorry. Um, the DOE yes. account does not have access to that YouTube? Oh, the, the at schools account? Yeah. Okay. So, Bobby, is that what you mean, the at schools account? So they would need to be logged into Gmail or not their at schools account? So, oh, right. So in addition to your at schools, Gmail, which is weird saying, um, many schools have their own school-based um, sort of accounts so like you could try that and that that should work i've tried this with other um like non at schools like regular g suite accounts um and if that doesn't work then maybe create just like a, a regular youtube channel for the school but i would i would recommend using your i would recommend testing out your school-based one your regular g suite if you have it already if that makes sense so let's see uh Premiere will begin shortly. So I just want, I want people to see what the countdown looks like because it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so there's, there's a countdown already. I, I hear it. Here we go. So as this is going, 
Um, what's nice is that you can pause it also. Maybe you want to rewind and see it again. And then if you want to go live, uh, you'll hit uh, Premiere or the Live button. So again, generating excitement. You've got a lot of people watching this. Um, you, know, you can watch it from your phones, other devices. Get the countdown. Suspense is killing me. So I had my friend Michelle help me out with this video. So we'll see, uh, we'll see her in a second. And there we go. <laughs> the first lady of the United States of America, Mrs. Michelle Obama. Okay. So I'm just gonna mute this. Right. What's that? You've worked hard for those seats. Oh, there we go. Okay, so as you can see, your video's playing. Okay, so I'm just going to pause this. All right, I'm going to stop my sharing now. Okay. Uh, okay, so I hope people have a better understanding of what that looks like when you're uploading your video to YouTube, how to premiere it live. Again, I, I recommend doing it that way because I think it's it's easier and you have the most control. Okay. I know it's playing Can we some. Can pause again and have a couple of questions? Please, yes, yes. Okay, so we've got some questions about your beautiful video editing. Okay. Um, are you able to uh, edit the appearance of the timer? And is, I assume that's the countdown timer, and is the music you added generic? The, that is all generic, that's all preset. So that countdown is from YouTube. So you can't change that, unfortunately, and you can't change that music. So that's just, that's just there. And another great question and about after you've done the live stream, does it get added to your channel and can you send out the link post? Correct, yes. So that's another, that's another um, benefit to this. After the live stream, it does get added to your channel and then people can watch it over again and you can reshare it. So that's, that, that'll be there on your YouTube channel. And some people have asked about sharing the unlisted link because they don't want it publicly available. Um, how would they, how should we share it with parents? So I would suggest the normal ways we communicate with parents. Yes. So whether that's through Remind, whether that's through Google Classroom, um, or you could post it on your website. But obviously if you post it on your website, other people have access. Now, on so, day, um, I'm gonna mute, mute everybody for a second, Tracy. Just unmute yourself, okay? Okay. So, Tracy, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself. Sorry, I'm playing the video. Give me one second. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I'll, I'll take a look at the. Can you cast from iMovie? Um, I don't think so. Actually, I don't even know if I would recommend that. Um, I would, once everything's in iMovie, I would ex just export it out as a single file and then upload it to YouTube. But uh, I would, I don't know if it's possible to cast from iMovie. Hi, I'm sorry. I just had it. So just the reason why I'm asking that is because I'm trying to avoid using YouTube at all. Okay. It's possible just to like get the MP4 file and then when on the Google Meet, share the MP4 file like via that you know what I'm saying I, I see what you're saying so if if the goal is to not use YouTube so if you're using Google meet a uh, live stream so you have the capability of streaming a tab right so like I, I recommend YouTube just because people are familiar with it but you could do another video sharing platform such as Vimeo um, if the video is like all buffered and 
playing through your Google Drive, you might be able to do that too. But if the goal is to avoid YouTube, I'd, I'd try Vimeo. Um, you, would that work in your, in your case? Uh, yeah, it might. Like, so if we're doing, so then wouldn't it just be better to use a Google Meet and then just share, like screen share that video and hit play? Like if I'm doing it from the same, if I'm the moderator of the Google Meet account and then also have the video in front, like on saved in my computer, I could just share, I just select that screen, right? Yes, but in, in that case, you wouldn't be streaming everything. People would be in your actual Google Meet. And um, yes, right. So so I don't know if you wanted that streaming with, with the public. And also, I don't know how good that audio will be. Um, the main reason why there's an option to stream through your tab is because the music will play through uh, your participant speakers and it's it's a better sound quality than playing from your computer but uh, i would run some tests you know I, I have to figure this out so i gotta play with it now so I yeah, yeah, it. thank you so much i appreciate um, it somebody asked great, sorry go on uh, somebody asked a great question how do you find a youtube homepage? sure i'll show that right now um i'll share my screen so how do you find a youtube homepage? um you go to youtube and then assuming that you're signed in uh, if you click on your name at the top, you got to go to your channel. And then this is this is my page right over here. So again, you click on your uh, icon at the top right, go to your channel. And then when you're in that area where it says you can add other moderators, you would copy and paste that link right over there. Okay, we've got a couple more questions coming in. Sure. Um, so we've got two questions. One is about the size limit. Now I just did a bit of checking and it says you can upload to 128 gigs or 12 hours of recording. Do you know that's, if that's per video? That's probably per video. I hope nobody's graduation is that long. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if, if, okay, so if for some reason you do need to compress your video, uh, now we're getting into technical, the technical uh, world of it. If you need to compress your video, there's a free app called Handbrake that I use to compress my videos. But with, would you say, Tracy, like 128 gigabytes? Yeah, like, I mean, that's huge. You're good. You're good. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing is, so Veronica has a question here saying, people, so can you just explain one more time why people outside our organization cannot access our Google Meet? It's, did, you uh, mean, did you mean if we use the live function? So I think that was just answering the question you just asked. We're talking about about broadcasting and sharing a tab in Google Meet. Right. Yeah. So I'll, just to clarify, because it is a little confusing. So there, within this PD that I'm doing, there's two ways to um, broadcast via Meet. You can just have a regular Meet meeting and invite people in there, and then you can you know share share your tab, what have you. But if you want to do a live stream and not have people in your meet, then you're doing, uh, you're setting up a, a, a meet live stream. And that is um, restricted to people within your school domain. So I, I, hopefully that answers it. Yeah. So a live stream, anyone can join. Well, is, not, not, not anyone. Yeah, anyone with a school domain can join. And, and the benefit to that is you don't have 100 people in your Google meet. And also there's no mute all in a Google Meet. So that's, that's gonna be pandemonium. But there's a function to, to mute all in, the, in a live stream? So in the live stream, nobody's talking. People are just watching. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. yeah. Got it. Um, and these are good questions. What, what else do we have here? Um, I don't know whether Lisa knows this one. Sorry to ask you, Lisa, but I'm not <laughs> sure we know the answer to this one. And it says, um, is Zoom going to stay limited to official DOE NYC students.net if people wanted to use Zoom? That I'm not familiar with. That's um, why, I d Lisa, I don't know if you can answer it because it's putting you on the spot. I understand if you can't. She, she might be leading a, a separate. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, we, if, you, um, if you email me that, Santi at projectrecess.org, I can... Uh, we can look into it and then respond to you. I'll add my email into the chat. And I'm keeping a list of these questions. Thank you very much. Um, the slideshow, is it available? Yes, um, I can post the slideshow. I'll, I'll do it right now because I think this was limited to 100 people, uh, unfortunately. 
So. And one other question is, we had it at the very beginning. So we've got someone who wants to be very brave here and do like a half pre-recorded and half live. So maybe the compare's doing the live bit and then they want to go to pre-recorded. Yeah. Do we have any examples of that or do you so, have any advice on that? So it is possible. I, I need to look further into that, but I was watching a, a, an example of a live stream last night where the screen was split. You had your main screen with, um, I guess it was pre-recorded content and then another screen, screen it looked like it was um, being fed into Zoom. So there's, there's a possible way to do that. Um, I've just not looked into it. And, you know, we, we don't have time to get into that with this PD, but... Um, but drop us an email. Yeah. Um, we can look into it. I know also if you use OBS software, you can do it through YouTube, but you need someone who is really competent at video editing, not, exactly. not so, me. Uh, again, just... Um, I mean, it's great to, you know, mix your, your live feed with your pre-recorded content. But again, I, I just want to stress like that takes a lot of planning, technical ability and, uh, and skill to do that. And these are, these are very crazy times right now. A lot of us are, are, are stretched thin. So maybe you want to make this as easy as possible. That's why I'm recommending a uh, pre-recorded content. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm on non-DOE, correct? So if we have any other questions, if not, some of the things that come up with my schools about the more informal side. So I don't know about getting students recording and things and how we're capturing that. I don't know if anyone's interested in that. Um, I'm sorry, just real quick, this question, what program do you use to make the name scroll? Uh, you can do that in iMovie. There are some presets in there. So I would um, just make sure you have everybody in a spreadsheet, make sure you're not missing anyone. You can sort it by alpha order, and then I would drop it in iMovie. Um, there's a, a million Google video, uh, YouTube videos on how to do that in, in iMovie. Um, I'm sorry, Tracy. And what... iMovie, I have to say, is really simple. I am not a video editor, and even I can make the name scroll. You, you use go. the Star Wars option if you need to start really basic. Um, here's a question. Um, I would like to use clips of some commencement speeches that have been broadcast. Is there a copyright issue? Um, I mean, if you're using it for educational purposes, I think it's, I think it's okay. Uh, I think there's also like a time limit where if you use like a certain amount of time and you're not doing the whole thing, it's fine. Um, but yeah, I, I encourage it. I think uh, the hardest part is like downloading the clip from YouTube, but there are uh, ways to do that also. Message and me off the any chat. Any program for... suggestions for Android users is what they're saying. So rather than iMovie. So uh, we touched on Wii Video, so that's web-based. So you can do that on, you know, using a Chromebook. Um, if by Android they mean like using their phone, um, I'm not sure. There, there probably is Adobe Premiere maybe there, but there might be a cost to it. Um, and with Wii Video, just so you guys know, you can have more than one person editing. So it's a collaborative tool and you can pay for a very short, I think, you can pay for like 10 days access and things. So although you may want to choose the more expensive version, you can limit it. And I think it's not much. I remember looking into it for a school. Um, so Jordan posted something, YouTube flags content as copyright. That, that is the case. Um, I'm not sure how that works if that clip is within a larger clip of original content. Um, again, I would test it out. I would do your premiere before your graduation, maybe like a week or two, and then see if anything gets flagged. But that, that's the beauty of doing the pre-recorded stuff. You have time to, to play around with it. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm not exactly sure how the YouTube algorithm will flag the pre-record or the uh, copyright, copyrighted content. Um, if you were to add sp student speeches to a pre-recorded event, how do you recommend we ask students to do that? Um, most students have phones. I would ask them to record it on their phone, drop it in a Google Drive, uh, and then share it with you. I think um, most phones these days record pretty well. Again, I would tell them to record in portrait, um, speak loudly, uh, have some nice lighting, but uh, I, I would have them record it and then drop it in Google Drive. And the nice thing with that is you can tell them to limit it, because remember, if you've got 88 students and they all did 30 seconds, that's 44 minutes. So you might want to give them some guidelines with that recording to keep it very short or um, a lot of schools are posing questions. What's one thing to reflect on? 
Yeah. Another thing people are doing is if students have caps or are getting caps is moving the tassel and getting them all to do it and then editing it together like a big grid. So at the end of the session, everybody moves their tassel to celebrate their graduating. Yeah. Uh, we've got um, another question. Can viewers translate the video in Meet and or YouTube? So I'm, I'm not uh, positive on the translation features in, uh, in the YouTube live stream. Uh, I can take a look at that. But, um, but yeah, we, we, would need to get, we need to get back to you. I know there's automatically generated um, captions. It's, I think it's using like voice to text, but in terms of translations, um, that I'm not sure. Um, what do you we'll get back to you, but I am, I've got a feeling the answer is yes, but we will get back to you. Yeah. What do you use to make a grid of multiple, multiple videos? Um, it really depends. Um, I th the easiest way to do it live, you can use Google Meet, use Grid View, and just record the screen. Um, but if you want to use the pre-recorded stuff, uh, there's a way to do that in iMovie. Again, um, you would have to search YouTube on a tutorial, but I, I believe I, iMovie will, uh, will give you that option. Uh, I'll, I'll drop the link to the slideshow in, in here one more time. Uh, yes, everybody will have access to the slides, no worries. And again, I, I will send this recording out and I most likely will do this one more time also. I know every school is in a position of uh, hosting their virtual graduation. So I will run this one more time um, and I'll have more examples on there. So this was sort of like a test of how this worked. The other thing is some schools are doing like an informal live uh, yearbook. So they're using things like Flipgrid, etc. So yeah. students and teachers can give shout outs. So yeah. it might be another piece you want to build in. Yeah, sure. No, I, uh, again, like there's a lot of platforms out there. Um, I've seen some pretty great examples uh, using Flipgrid. On the agenda, which I can drop in the chat one more time, uh, at the bottom, uh, there is a resources um, a resources link. So I just dropped the agenda one more time. At the bottom of the agenda, there's a, a blog post from Lisa Nielsen, who helps uh, run these professional development sessions. She has a great blog post on virtual graduations, if you're not read it already. And uh, there is a piece on there about using Flipgrid. Uh, it was actually like a, a medical school graduation and all the doctors are um, reciting the uh, Hippocratic Oath in Flipgrid. It's pretty cool. Um, for those of you who want the recording, as long as you signed in, um, and I'll drop that back in again, you can, we'll send the video recordings out to you. Exactly. Um, on the agenda, you'll also notice there's that magic CTLE form. Yep. So yeah. You may want to complete that. Yeah. So um, go ahead. If, if you need CTLE hours at the bottom of the agenda, uh, there's, a, there's a link that takes you to a Google form that you can fill out. Uh, yes, I'll make the video link. Except, uh, I'll make it public. I'll I'll post it on my YouTube and I'll I'll email everybody. So again, if you haven't um, uh, added your information to the sign-in sheet, uh, please do that just so I have a, a record of everybody here. Um, let me post that one more time, and then I'll I'll email everybody directly uh, the link to this video. So there's a sign-in if you haven't already. Uh, so I'll, I'll hang around for a little bit, but that's that's pretty much it. Um, I'll take some questions for the next uh, you know ten minutes if folks have any. But I appreciate folks coming out. I'm gonna do this again, and then um, I hope I hope everybody has a has a smooth virtual graduation. Thanks thanks everybody for joining. Thank you so much. And I'm just dropping Santi's email address into the chat one more time, just in case anybody wants it. Okay, feel free to reach out to us. Will we be getting another invite for the next workshop? Um, I'm going to post it in that, uh, that like remote calendar thing. And then I believe uh, Lisa will probably make another Facebook invitation. But uh, it'll check that remote. You know, I'm going to drop that link in there too, just because it's, um, it's a good spreadsheet to, to have a link to. Where's that? The, uh, the remote cal. All right. So I'm going to drop this. Uh, on here. Okay, so that link, whoops, I sent it privately. Let me send it to everybody. So yeah, that link, um, all of the PDs are located on there. Uh, 
even this one that you're on. So I'm going to see if I can organize a time next week. I'm, I'm going to do a few more of these just because I know there's a need. And then, um, you know, we'll, we'll make this even more polished and we'll have some more examples on there. Using YouTube, do you need to create an account? Yeah, you, you, need, a, you need a YouTube account uh, to do all these things. And it's, um, it's, it should be linked with your Google account. You should be able to use this with your school Google account, not your at schools, but your, if your school has their own uh, G Suite domain, you should be able to do that. They can enable it. The only thing to remember is you have to activate the live stream 24 hours before you want to use it, okay? So make sure you do that at least 24 hours before, yeah. before you can start putting it all together. Yeah. Tracy, I'm going to do another mute all. Just uh, unmute yourself, okay? So yeah, any um, any other questions at all? Tansy, can I ask a question? Yes. Sorry, it's just I think it's just easier for me to say it than spell it out. So I was the one that was just confused about this. Um, this sorry, let me show my face. It's kind of rude. Um, so I was the one who was just confused about the Google Meet link versus the live stream because we just had a sports ceremony and in an income orient an incoming ninth grade orientation. And what I did is I just sent out a link to the Google Meet, and then I just kept hitting admit for anybody who was outside of our organization, and that worked. So we were considering doing that same thing because I know our principal kind of likes the idea of that um, interaction. So maybe um, have some people maybe say a few words back and forth. If it's the students, then I have no problem with that. But you're saying that if we create this as a live stream and I send out the link to everybody, let's say somebody lives in Texas, a grandmother, whatever it is, they can't access the link because they're not part of our organization? Correct, so um, again, there are two ways to do this via Meet. You can do it as an actual Meet meeting where, as you were saying, just admit everybody in there. Um, the issue with that is, you know, someone could leave their mic unmuted and then you hear all this noise in the background, especially when you have a large number of people like that. It gets, it gets unruly. You know, you, if, if, if you were to go that way, I would highly recommend, well, you can only have one person that's going through the list and, and muting and unmuting people. And that's, you're probably going to be busy doing something else. Right. Um, so if you did create the live stream uh, via calendar, what I did earlier, yes, unfortunately, the only people who can view that live stream are people that have an email with your school's domain. Because if someone just has a regular Gmail account, which most parents do, and they click on that link, it's going to say that it's not available to them. So it's, it's tricky. So if, if your goal is to live stream, some, live stream something to a, like a, a large group, um, yeah, you could you know, look into YouTube, look into Zoom, look into Microsoft Teams. That, that, that may have a feature to do it. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of security built into to meet with schools, uh, obviously, you know, because we're dealing with student information. It just, it just seems weird to me that a Google Meet link, which allows that interaction, yeah. can go outside of the organization, but a stream, which there's no interaction, meaning all you're doing is sitting there listening, yeah. you can't access. It almost seems like it should be the other way around, which is why I think I'm just so confused. Right, right it, is, it, is, it is weird, yeah. Um, something you can try, which I've not done yet, um, maybe you can try doing a live stream meet with a personal Gmail because if you do it with a personal Gmail, though, there there will be no restriction. Uh, oh. I'm assuming, yeah. So, oh. so I I would test that out. Maybe you want to make a, you know, it always gets a little tricky when you make a personal Google account and you do school stuff with it. But if if the purpose of that is just to make um, a live stream meet, you know, and you're doing a ceremony or whatever, you know, I think that might be on the safer side of it. But I, I would test that out using like a personal Gmail. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Michael, I think we might need to get back to you, but my understanding would be, yes, if the parents used the student account, they would yeah. be able to sign in. Yeah. Wouldn't that alleviate um, that other woman's issue? Veronica's or, issue. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't catch your name. I was something through my people here. Um, that might be a way to get around that. True. Uh, yeah, just to reiterate, um, if the teacher creates that meet within their they're at school's domain, and then the, um, the students' families sign in with their 
the student's account, then they can view it that way. Yeah, that, 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 that's one way to do it also. Yeah. And as Santi says, there are other programs. It, yeah. We just didn't want to focus on too many. Yeah. Of, I don't know about you, but if I get too much information, my mind just goes. Yeah, exactly. I see, uh, I see Reese is on there. Special shout out to Reese. Hey, hey Reese, anything you want to you wanna suggest, man? I know you're doing a lot with uh, virtual uh, graduations. He might be in the middle of something. No, never mind. <laughs> um, no, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. A anything you want to add, man? I know. Hey. I'm doing a lot uh, of I, I'm, yeah, I'm just down to trying to think about um, whether to send people to YouTube Live and have them comment to be able to comment live or yeah. control the situation a little bit more and have people do pre pre ceremony meetings on, mm -hmm. on Google Meet. Mm. then go to watch the premiere, then come back and, and chop it up and celebrate and high five and all that. that that's, that's a great idea. Like that's another suggestion also. I know Lisa was mentioning that have breakout rooms before or after, you know, maybe mm -hmm. you want to have a breakout room with the, just your students in a Google meet. You can try that also, but yeah, that's, that's a great suggestion, man. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, if there are no more questions, then I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna end the the call again. I'm That's gonna download. Hard work. Oh, thank thank you all. Also, I know this is not an easy time to be a teacher, so thank you for uh, for joining me on this Friday. Have a great weekend. I will send everyone a link to the video. All right. Uh, take care. Thanks, everyone. Um, I don't know if anyone caught the my comment in the chat before, but we use um, a company to not a company a, a program to do the closed captioning. And we had a little mishap with some of the things. So double proof your videos before you post them. Because, what, um, uh, what was that program? Um, I don't know. I didn't actually do it. Oh, okay. One of, the, one of the clubs did it. But um, yeah, so it, it could have been a real big mess if it would have gone on <laughs> that's a, like a website like that. <laughs> that's like, a, that's like, a, like an autocorrect, like verbal type of... Uh... <laughs> Correct. And it was not a good uh, situation at all. Okay. <laughs> So double check the captions. Okay, cool. Yes, Thank absolutely. you. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, any last questions before I, I end the meeting? Okay. Thanks again, everyone. Tracy, thanks for your help. And uh, have, a, have a great weekend. I'll, we'll be in touch. Thanks, everybody.